Okay, we're getting ready to start our pre-trip inspection. Uh, according to this checklist, the very first thing you want to do is the air brake test. They actually require you to do the air brake test now in the state of Maryland because first, you got to do it first before you do anything because failure to pass the air brake exam is an automatic failure. So they want you to do the air brake test first because if you happen to fail the air brake test, then there's no reason to continue to do the pre-trip inspection. So we're gonna start with the air brake test. First of all, I wanna let the instructor know that the rear wheels are chalk so the vehicle won't roll. And I like to tell the instructor everything I'm doing before I do it. That way I'm sure that they, I'm, I'm assured that they have a clear understanding of what we're doing. Okay, I let them know that the rear wheels are chalk so the vehicle won't roll. I'm gonna start the vehicle up and I'm allow the air pressure to build up between 120 to 140 PSI. Once it reaches 120, 140 uh, PSI, you should hear a governor cutout, uh, a sound that goes psh, that lets you know that the air tanks are full. At that point, I'm gonna turn the vehicle off. I'm gonna turn the key to the on position. I'm gonna push the parking brake in and I'm gonna hold the service brake down. I'm gonna hold it down for one minute. I wanna make sure I'm not losing no more than three pounds of pressure in one minute. Once that minute is up, I'm gonna fan the brake. As I fan the brake, the air pressure will drop down. Once it drops down below 60 PSI, a warning light and a warning buzzer should come on. I'll continue to fan the brake until the parking brake pop out between 20 and 40 PSI, okay? Now that we've told them what we're doing, now we have to demonstrate it pretty much verbatim to the way we just told them. So let's do that. Once again, the rear wheels are chalk. We'll start the vehicle up. As I start the vehicle up, my air pressure gauges that's located right here, I want to make sure it's reading between 120 and 140 PSI. Once it reaches that point right there, I'm going to turn the vehicle off, turn the key to the on position, I'm going to push the parking brake in, let the brake settle, the air pressure settle, put my foot on the service, uh, on the service brake. I'm going to hold it down for one minute. I want to make sure I don't lose no more than three pounds of pressure in one minute. Now I'll ask the instructor to time me so that way you ensure that you held it down for at least one minute. So I'm going to hold my foot firm to the ground without letting the pedal move for one minute and I'm looking at this gauge right here. I want to make sure that that gauge isn't moving. It's not dropping down no more than three pounds of pressure. So I'll just continue to hold it until my minute is up. Okay. Once my minute is up, I didn't lose no more than three pounds of pressure. Now I'm gonna fan the brake. As I fan the brake, the air pressure drops down. Once it drops down below 60 PSI, I'll get a warning light and a warning buzzer. I'll continue to fan the brake until the parking brake pop out between 20 and 40 PSI. Once that parking brake pop out, that indicates that my air brakes are working. At this point, I'm gonna start the vehicle back up and I'm gonna allow my air pressure to build back up. I'll explain to the instructor, once the air pressure build above 60 PSI, this warning light and warning buzzer will go off and I'll continue to build it back up to the normal operating range, which is above 120 PSI. Okay, start it up and allow my air pressure to build back up. Now to accelerate a little bit faster to get your air pressure to build up is that I'll accelerate slightly and build my air pressure up. Okay, once my air pressure has risen above 60 PSI, that warning light and that warning buzzer will go off. I'll continue to build the air pressure back up until the governor cutout comes on, which is when the air pressure is above 120 PSI. Once you hear that sound go off, that's the governor cut off indicating that the air tanks are full. So my air brake test is now complete. 
So I want to check on my air brakes. So we know, and the instructor know, that the air brake portion of the exam is now complete. Now we're going to go to the parking brake test. Now to perform a parking brake test with the vehicle running, the parking brake on so the vehicle won't move, I'll put the vehicle down and drive. I'll accelerate slightly, indicate that the vehicle don't move. I'll put it in reverse, accelerate slightly, make sure that the vehicle don't move. Put it back in neutral. The parking brake test is now complete. So now I'm going to check that off. The next thing to do is the service brake test. To perform a service brake test, I'm going to push the parking brake in, put my foot on the service brake, put it down and drive, and the vehicle should move. I'll put it up in reverse uh, with my foot on the service brake, and the vehicle should move. Now you also want to explain to the instructor the proper way of testing the service brake test is that you would let the vehicle roll about five miles an hour put your foot on the service brake, make sure it come to a complete stop, and it don't swerve from one way to the other. Okay? Push the service brake in, put my foot on the service brake, put down and drive, explain to the instructor that the vehicle is not rolling. Put it in reverse, make sure that the vehicle don't roll. Put it back in neutral, pull the parking brake out, and that indicates that my service brake will work. We're gonna check that off. Next thing that's listed on the checklist is the light indicators. So my light indicators, first of all, I want to check my interior lights, the dome lights, to make sure that they're working. On the dash, I want to check the left turn signal, make sure it's working. The right turn signal, make sure it's working. My four-way flashes is working. I'm gonna turn my front headlights on and pull on my high beams to make sure that my high beam lights are working. Okay, turn that off. Okay, now all my light indicators are working. We're gonna check that off. Okay, the next thing listed is our emergency equipment. The emergency equipment is a BC fire extinguisher. It's properly mounted and fully charged. I know it's fully charged because the indicator is in the green. I have three triangle reflectors that's located right there. I also want to let you know that this vehicle is equipped with circuit breakers. However, if I didn't have circuit breakers, I'll make sure I had spare fuses. Okay? I also want to mention my first aid kit that is properly mounted and fully stocked that's located right there. My body fluid kit is properly mounted and fully stopped. It's located right there. Okay, we're going to check that off. Okay, the next thing listed is the windshield. I want to check the windshield, make sure there's no crack damage or any illegal stickers on the windshield. Okay, I want to check my windshield wipers and windshield washer fluid, make sure that they're working correctly. Now I want to check what they call traffic monitoring devices. But traffic monitoring devices is another name for your mirrors. I want to check my side mirrors over here, my flat mirror, my convex mirror, make sure it's properly adjusted to me. There's no crack damage or any illegal stickers. I want to check my crossover mirrors. There's tight and secure properly mounted with no illegal stickers. I'll check the passenger side mirror, make sure it's not crack damaged, any illegal stickers, and it's properly adjusted to me. I'll check my student mirror that's located over here, overhead mirror. Uh, I can see my students and my students can see me. Okay, so now our mirrors are done. We're going to check that off. Next thing listed is the heater and defrost. I'll inspect the heater and defrost to make sure that they're working correctly. Then we check that off. Next thing listed is the horn. We make sure that the horn is working correctly and we check that off. Next thing listed is the entry door. 
I'll make sure this door open and close, fairly easy. The hinges are not binding. There's nothing, no obstacles or obstructions in the way of the door. We check that off. Okay. Now I want to check my emergency exits. Check the emergency exit. This emergency exit right here. I'll make sure it's working correctly. Lift up. Pull down. Make sure that the emergency exit opens and closes fairly easy. The emergency exit right here, the proper way of uh, operating this is that I'll pull the red handle out, push that window out. So I pull the red handle up, push the window out. Pull it back to me, push it back down, and that indicates that the uh, emergency exit on the windows are working correctly. As I walk to the back, I will inspect this, e this emergency exit right here. The proper way of inspecting this, if this vehicle was running or the key is on the on position, when I lift this handle up and push out, you'll hear a warning alarm, alarm that goes off. Shut it back, latch it in place, the warning uh, alarm goes off. I would tell the instructor I would inspect this emergency exit the same way I inspected that emergency exit up front. Now just remember, once you inspect one item, you don't have to re-inspect it again. You just tell them you would inspect it the same way you did as the one up front. The wheelchair lift. I'll make sure it's tight and secure, properly mounted, not missing any bolts, not missing any screws, and it's properly firm in place. Okay? I'll check all these emergency exits the same as I check the one in the front, okay? We can check that off as we go back. Now, they also want you to mention what they call a passenger monitoring device. A passenger monitoring device is these little cameras. If your vehicle is, is equipped with these cameras, then you need to inspect these cameras. I'll inspect this camera in the back, make sure it's tight, secure, properly mounted, make sure it's working correctly, okay? I'll inspect these seats. I'll inspect this seat right here. I'll make sure it's properly mounted to the frame and the frame is properly mounted to the floor. It's nice, tight, and secure, okay? As I walk down here, I'll inspect all these seats the same as I inspect that one. I'll inspect this aisle, make sure that there's no obstacles or obstructions in the center of this aisle and it's working correctly, okay? All right, so as I come here, I wanna check off this. I wanna check off the emergency exit that we just spoke about check off the passenger seat that we just spoke about and we check off the uh, also want to inspect this camera here the same as I inspect that camera in the rear and in, in their words they call it a passenger monitoring device but it's nothing but a camera we check that off now what I want to do I'm gonna shut this door I'm gonna shut this entry door and I want to check my students' uh, lights. I want to check the caution lights, turn this master switch on right here, hit the amber light, make sure it's lit on the dash. And if you look through the crossover mirrors, you can see the, the caution flashing lights through the mirror. You want to make sure that they're working correctly. Now, when I open this door, those caution lights now turn red. Now I have my red lights, stop lights that I'm checking. I have my stop arm that's down there that I'm checking. And I have my stop sign right here that's working. Okay? I want to walk you outside and show it to you from the outside.
that's what they call the strobe light up there. That's also working. Okay? Here we go. Turn everything off. By the way, the strobe light switch is located right here. This is the strobe light switch. Now the strobe light switch right here, this master switch has to be on, and then you have uh, your caution light switch that's located right here, and this is uh, your red stop lights that's located right here. Turn that off. Once I turn that off, it deactivates the red lights the stop arm comes in and the stop signs pull back in. Okay? Alright, so we check that off. We check off the student lights. The stop, the stop arm and stop lights. Now what we want to do, we want to check all the external lights. So to check the external lights, I'm gonna turn the front headlights on. I'm gonna turn my four-way flashers on. Walk out. Turn the vehicle off because we can't ready to make our way outside. Turn the vehicle off. I also want to explain to the instructor that that alarm that's going off is because there is a safety switch that's in the back that has to be deactivated. Turn that switch off, hit that switch, and the, the alarm goes off. The purpose of that switch being in the rear is that it forces the driver to walk to the back of the vehicle to make sure that there's no students left on the bus. Okay. That was the headlight alarm that I left on accidentally. All right. Let's walk outside.
once again i'll just explain to the instructor i'll inspect all my lights and lenses make sure everything is tight and secure properly mounted not missing any screws not missing any bolts okay now i'm gonna unlatch the hood and we're going to inspect all our fluids And get in the habit when you're doing your pre-trip inspection, get in the habit for the most part of just telling the instructor everything you're doing. It may not necessarily get you any additional credit, but you just want to let them know that you know what you're talking about and you're following this list. Okay? As I unmatch the hood on both sides, I'll pull the hood back. I pull the hood back, I want to make sure it's sitting level and it won't rock back on me. I walk through this side over here. First of all, I would point out to the uh, instructor back behind there is the power steering pump. If I can see the power steering pump, I'll make sure it's tight and secure, properly mounted, make sure it's not leaking. I'll check my oil dipstick. The proper way of checking the oil, I'll pull the dipstick out, wipe it clean, stick it back in there, pull it back out, make sure it's above the add mark, make sure it's not leaking. The transmission dipstick is tight and secure, properly mounted, and it's not leaking. I would check that the same way as the oil, except for the engine would be running, okay? Um, I'll check all these hoses and clamps, make sure everything is tight and secure, properly mounted, and nothing's leaking. The power steering reservoir is tight and secure, properly mounted, and it's not leaking. Okay? Um, on this side, I'll check the coolant reservoir. I'll make sure the coolant reservoir is tight and secure, properly mounted, make sure it's not leaking, make sure the cap is on tight. I'll also explain to the instructor, I'll never open that cap while the engine is hot, okay? My windshield washer fluid, I'll make sure it's tight and secure, properly mounted, make sure it's not leaking, make sure the cap is on tight. Back behind here, I can't physically see it, but if I could, I'll inspect the water pump. I'll make sure the water pump is tight and secure, properly mounted, and it's not leaking any fluids, okay? All right, that takes care of our fluids. Okay, I want to go back on this side, and I tell you, I really, really hate the way that they have this checklist, because in my opinion, it's not any consistent order, but this is what they want, so this is what we give them. Okay, the steering system, I want to check the steering rod, the steering box, the hose and coupling, the pitman arm, the nut and the carter pin, the drag link, the knuckle nut and carter pin, and the tie rod. All that is the steering system. I'll tell the instructor I'll inspect all those items and make sure everything is tight and secure, properly mounted, and nothing's leaking. Only thing I did was group all this stuff together and stamped it at the end. So that takes care of the steering system. Let's check that all. Okay, we go here, we go to the top of the tire. We make sure the tire is evenly worn. It should be no less than 430 seconds of tread depth. I'll never mix bias and radial tires on the front, nor would I put recap tires on the front. I'll check the side of the tire, make sure there's no crack damage, any illegal patches, and there's no bubbles on the side of the tire. Between the tire and the rim is the bead. I'll make sure that there's no air leaking from the bead of the tire. I'll check the rim. Make sure the rim is tight and secure, properly mounted, with no illegal wells. I'll inspect these lug nuts. Make sure the lug nuts are tight and secure, no rust spots or shiny spots indicating looseness. The oil hub. The oil hub is tight and secure, properly mounted, and it's not leaking any fluids. I'll also inspect this valve stem. Make sure the valve stem is tight and secure, properly mounted, make sure it's not leaking. Okay? We can check off the tire. We can check off the rim. We could check off the lug nuts. We talked about the leaf springs. I'm sorry, let's get to the leaf springs. The suspension items. The suspension items include the leaf springs. We'll make sure they're not cracked, damaged, welded, repaired, shifted, or broken. The leaf spring hangers are tightly holding the leaf springs to, um, up. The U-bolts are tightly holding the leaf springs together. And I also inspect this shock right here. Make sure the shock is tight and secure, properly mounted. Make sure it's not leaking any fluids. 
I also mentioned the front frame. Make sure that frame is tight and secure, properly mounted with no illegal wells. Okay, let's check that off. That covers the, the leaf springs. Okay, now we go to the braking system. The braking system, I will check the brake hose, the brake coupling, the brake line, the brake chamber, slack adjuster, brake drum, and brake liner. I'll make sure everything is tight and secure, properly mounted, nothing's leaking, okay? Just group that stuff together and stamp it at the end. Now we can check off the braking system because that's done. And I also want to mention that on the brakes, I'll make sure that there's no grease, oil, or uh, contamination on the brake liner itself. Okay? Let's check that off. Okay. You come over here. Over here, we're going to inspect the crane, suspension, brakes, tire, wheel, assembly on this side the same as we did on that side you don't have to go into detail about each individual item because you already gave them that so you don't have to do it again just tell them you inspect these items over here the same as you did the, over there but group it together as an assembly frame suspension brakes tire wheel assembly on this side as you did on that side okay at this point i'm gonna shut the hood down i shut the hood down i'm gonna latch it on both sides. Okay, as I latch it on, on, on both sides, I'm gonna walk over here on this side. Once again, they want you to mention the lights and reflectors. It's tight and secure, properly mounted, not missing any screws. This light here is tight and secure, properly mounted, not missing any screws. We get to the fuel tank assembly. I'll inspect the cap, the straps, and the hoses. Everything is tight and secure, properly mounted, and nothing's leaking. I'll look on the ground, make sure that there's no puddles on the ground indicating anything leaking, okay? Back here, once again, I'll inspect that rear frame, if I can see it. Make sure it's tight and secure, properly mounted, with no illegal wells. I also wanna mention that um, the rear tire should have no less than 230 seconds of tread depth on it. And I'll inspect the frame, suspension, brake, tire, wheel assembly on this side, the same as I did on that side. And this is my axle hub. I'm gonna mention this because it have grease inside of it. And I wanna make sure it's not leaking. It's tight and secure, properly mounted, and it's not leaking, okay? As I come back here, this is my wheelchair lift. The proper way of operating the wheelchair lift if the vehicle was running in neutral, I'll activate the wheelchair lift switch, open the door, take the controls, lift the wheelchair out, lift it down, lift it back up, fold it back in, make sure it's tight and secure, properly mounted, shut the door, and latch it. Okay? All right, we checked that off. Okay, they also ask for um, outside monitoring devices, which this vehicle don't have. We don't have any outside cameras. The cameras are just located inside, so we don't have to mention the outside cameras. Okay, as we walk through the back, I want to inspect those clearance lights, make sure they're tight and secure, properly mounted, not missing any screws. The stop lights. A tight and secure properly mounted, not missing any screws. The caution lights are tight and secure properly mounted, not missing any screws. I'll check uh, my turn signal, my brake lights, my reverse light, my tag light, and my uh, braking lights. Make sure everything is tight and secure properly mounted, not missing any screws, and the lenses are tight and secure. I'll inspect all these lights over here the same as I did those over there. Okay, let's mark off our external lights. Okay, we walk over here. We tell the instructor we're going to inspect all these reflectors 
and lights on this side the same as you get on that side. Okay? My battery. My battery is located right here. I'll inspect the battery, the post, the cable, and the hole down. Everything is tight and secure, properly mounted, without excessive corrosion around the terminals itself. Shut the door. Make sure that the door latch is in place. Check off the battery. And at the end of your inspection, you can see that everything that needs to be inspected has been checked off. So what will you do? You tell the instructor will actually give you this sheet when you go take your exam. Go by this sheet right here and it's unlikely that you would miss or forget anything as long as you go by the sheet and check it off as you go. So at the end of that, you would tell the instructor that that concludes your pre-trip inspection. Not necessarily the way I would do it because I think it's way off the rails, but this is what's required, this is what's requested, and from what I understand, if you don't do it in this order right here, then you're not gonna get credit for it. So as much as you can, as best as you can, try to use this pre-trip checklist for your vehicle inspection and hopefully you can get through it. Thank you.